Liv's getting possibly a new boyfriend. How is Major going to react to that? She's what? <laughs> uh, it was a question, how is Major going to react to that? Well, I mean, I think it's safe to assume he's not going to be overly uh, thrilled about that, you know. Um, he's handled it so remarkably well. Like, because I, 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 I would constantly just ask myself, like, if this was me, and I had been with the girl of my dreams for eight years, and on a dime, she broke up with me. Like, h how well would I be able to, like, you know, behave and hold up? And there's no way I, I could t do it nearly as well as Major. So, it's funny. I, I, my answer is I imagine that he would be as about as understanding as you could expect. But there's also that part of me that goes, or maybe this is the point where he snaps. And he's like, you know what? I've, I've been at, I've been wonderful up until, and this is just so no. And that's when he, you know, like, you know, kicks the cat and, you know, slams the car door. I'm kidding. No one's kicking a cat, you guys. But is he going to challenge him to a duel? We Bradley James comes from Merlin. They could have, you know, a nice little duel there. That, that is true. And I did once play a cowboy, so it would be like a cowboy versus knight, which could make for some pretty cool uh, action sequences. But as, uh, as for any upcoming you know, duels, I think it would only be a duel of the uh, kind of uh, the, the emotional variety. A much more emo duel. Yeah, but it's a gamer episode coming up. You could challenge him to a game off. <laughs> I, would, I would kill him. <laughs> Hands down, I would win that one. It wouldn't be a duel. How are they going to integrate Major more into the storyline? It seems like he's just the roommate now for Robbie. Does it, or, or does it seem like Robbie's just the roommate for Major? <laughs> Fair. Uh, well, like I said, I think once the audience meets Major in his work environment and he sees sort of this uh, kind of this mysterious trend that gets happening with these kids just missing or going missing and people not looking into it, you know, he very much uh, embarks on his own adventure. So he no longer needs to have a reason to talk to Liv or to talk to Ravi. Like he gets to have his own independent story that you know, so which is great because then they can go off and do their own thing and it doesn't need to happen at the house for Major to be present at. You know what I mean? And it, it freed the writers up for us to like get a chance to play with Major and see more of who he is and, and, and his character. Is he kind of taking these like wayward zombies under wing? Uh, well, it seems like there's some like zombies that are out there that kind of need some help, and there's nobody looking out for their interests. And he seems like the sort of guy that would want to like help people out that way. When you say zombies, do you mean teenagers? Well, teenagers sometimes act like zombies, but maybe. Okay, very uh, very loose <laughs> use of the word zombie, but I'll roll with it. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think there are a lot of sort of lost wayward teens that he's he's helping out. Um, but I, uh, as far as zombies, I think uh, you know he does not believe they exist. I, I think he has a very much uh, a sort of a belief of them as any of us would, which is like, no, they're great movies, but they don't exactly exist, you know. Uh, well, one of the things that I, I, I enjoyed was um, how dark the, the writers would want it to, to make it. You know, at at Comic-Con, Rob pitched me, at, Sandy, at the San Diego Comic-Con, excuse me, Rob pitched me what his idea was for the finale and how and major story. And, and that was it. I was done. I was like, oh, yeah, 100 percent. I'm into that. Because, you know, it, at a certain, like, perfection is boring. Someone who's just nice and happy all the time is boring. Like, you, that's what I, I asked Rob very, very early on. What, what's, what's the secret? Like, or what, what's, what's going to be his conflict, you know? And so he gets thrown into this sort of adventure that gets really dark. And uh, and it's great because, you know, he is he's, he's a very stand-up, you know, uh, like... Uh, like, like a stand-up gentleman. He's a guy of great character and integrity, and he has strong convictions and morals, but the thing is, what's great is like when those get challenged or pushed, or he's, you know, uh, something's happening that he doesn't believe in, those, the strength of those morals and convictions can be just as strong coming back the other way. So in other words, like, you make someone mad who's like, you know, he 
he's capable of darkness as well. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is like, you know, the, capable of great positivity, but he's also not afraid, uh, you know, of, of challenging people or, or, you know, putting himself in risky spots to figure out what is going on. You know, I guess the the um, the importance of finding out what's right and what's just is greater than any fear that he might have of what what could happen. Because to me, I think one of the things that is uh, so brilliant about the book and the show, and I'm so glad that they used it, is that sarcastic narrative that you know that flows throughout. That voiceover is great because so often we're watching her experience these situations that we can't relate to in, in any way, shape, or form. But the way she describes how annoyed she is by it, or like how uncomfortable, like that you can relate to, and that you can get. So suddenly, like it becomes a little bit more accessible for us. So while it is something that you know we'll never ever like be able to firsthand understand, we're sort of uh, allowed to experience it from you know from a closer distance. You know what I mean? And uh, and I like it because it's just it, it's it's also funny. It's funny as hell. Like sometimes hearing what she's saying, you know, and she's dealing with terrible, terrible things, and, and she's just, eh, you know, tosses out some dry quip, you know, and you're like, that's, that's great, you know. It, it's also because I've never seen it before. It's new. Have you seen Intersection of Blaine and uh, major storylines at, at some point? I might. I might. <laughs> Are they going to be like animatis, these sort of situation, or will they kind of be, you know, friendly? I mean, what would you rather see, a bromance or <laughs> sort of a rivalry? I kind of enjoy both. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. It could go either way. And the good news is we've shot it both ways, so we'll have to see what the editors ended up using. <laughs> <laughs> did you and David Anders maybe plot some of that out? Hey, we got to write some of this in. We maybe did. We had a uh, we had a good time. We had a, we had a lot of fun. I mean, the whole cast got along. So it was actually a treat shoot with everybody. So like, Ravi moving in with me. I think part of it was bred of the producers seeing that Raul and I had become good friends. Same thing with the gaming and, and all of that stuff. So, you know, it's, it, uh, a lot of the, the, the real life led over into the show. It's funny you say that because uh, he doesn't, we, at least we've never seen a, a moment where he does, and I sort of, what she went through was so horrible and traumatic that I think certain things were like let, like he let slide, like maybe she she never left the house for three, you know, three months. How she got up. I also think, you know, when you're in love with someone, they can sometimes be like they become your blind spot, like because you love them so much that things like a casual observer might notice immediately. You don't because you're just you're so close to it, you know. And and that was the way I was able to make sense of it in my head because I thought the same thing. I was like, really, with the white skin and the hair, like you wouldn't immediately be like, come on, you know. But I think I think that's how. I, that's how it makes sense to me, at least. That's good to me. Oof. Okay, so I'm always a sucker for Call of Duty if I can play co-op with a buddy. Uh, Diablo 3, uh, when they just re-released that, I played that all the way through, loved it. Um, I picked up Dying Light because, oddly enough, that's the game, if you watch closely in the trailer, or excuse me, in the pilot, that's the game that I'm pre pretending to play with the, the, the Cupid nerdy girl, as she was labeled. Um, so I, I own that, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Evolve. Uh, I've just started to play, and then Raul picked up Bloodborne the other day, and I loved it. I just I've been so busy. I have not had a ch I have not been keeping up with my gaming or my reading, so I I'm, I'm slacking.